Hey everyone, my name is Anita Human, and today I'll be speaking on the topic quality onboarding, a ticket to a healthy open source experience. And if you're um, new to open source, or you, of course, we've all been through the Pigna phase, you must have experienced this onboarding um, process and uh, it could have either impacted you in a good way or in a bad way. And we're going to be discussing some of that during this section. So let's get to it. Um, but before we get into the topic, a little bit about me. I am Anita Human. I'm a technical writer at Apache API 6, a cloud native um, API gateway under the Apache Foundation. I'm also a developer advocate, previously at Kivano. I am an open source fan girl, and I say this because I think my entire career has been built around open source organizations, communities, and um, interactions. So, yeah, I'm an open source fan girl. <laughs> I love cats. Yeah, that's another thing about me to put out there. <laughs> All right, let's get into today's topic. So during this section, we're going to be looking at these um, topics. We're going to be looking at what exactly open source is, how does this affect us, then the common onboarding mistakes that have been made in open source communities, the consequences of poor onboarding to both the community and individuals in that particular community, and um, how this can be improved. And finally, we're going to look at some of the rewards that quality on onboarding can bring to a community, to a project, or to open source generally. All right, let's get into it. So before, before we discuss on the problem, let's identify what onboarding is. Well, onboarding is simple. Like if I'm putting it in basic terms, I'll just say it's um, bringing welcoming people in the proper way of welcoming people to a community. That's exactly how I put it. But then onboarding is a process of formally introducing and integrating newly recruited members of a community through the basic knowledge, the skills, and the behaviors that are needed to excel in that particular field. So it's basically you putting the newcomers in your community, the newcomers for your project, the users of your project through the step-by-step um, -step guides, through a detailed roadmap on understanding your project and navigating around your project or your community. That's basically onboarding, right? Well, how can someone something so easy and something that sounds so easy even be, you know, um, not be done properly? How can this how can someone flop with onboarding? Well, let's look at it. Well, um, from several experiences contributing to open source, I have heard a lot of persons share their opinions of how they, they're not properly onboarded in communities. Um, the onboarding in the communities made them take certain decisions or act in certain ways. And some of this is onboarding has affected several persons in different ways. For a community, you might see that um, there are lots of abandoned tax pending tags that were delegated to contributors or to the maintainers, thinking that they would um, you know, accomplish these tags. And at the end of the day, the tags were left halfway. Then reluctant to contribute. Of course, most contributors, most communities, you see, they have so many contributors. And if you're listing out the number of uh, contributors that joined the Slack or the uh, discussion channels, there will be over a million persons coming in. but these persons are not willing to contribute. They're just, you know, in the chats um, platforms and probably not engaging at all. Then uh, communities also experience the reduced productivity. Now, if the um, community members and um, the maintainers and all of the contributors are not willing to collaborate and are reluctant to actually make effort to grow this community. There's definitely going to be um, a gradual reduction in the productivity of that particular community or project. And then finally, no commitment. Now, you, a community that does not, you know, um, give the newcomers a warm welcome is most likely going to lose those newcomers the same way they came in. Now, I'm talking based on my experience, but I know a lot of persons also have experienced the same thing. So it definitely is not speculations. If a community does not give you the warm welcome that you need as an individual, you feel like maybe it's because 
I did something or because of this particular thing. And as a new contributor, there's definitely going to be that doubt on why people are not giving you the attention that you need to contribute to this project. So, now this is how um, poor onboarding affects our community. Now let's look at how it affects individual contributors. Well, you experience withdrawal as an individual. Several persons have done this. You know, during my contributions in a few open source communities that I experienced, you know, not I wasn't I didn't receive the quality onboarding I, I thought I, I needed. I abandoned. I ran away. I, that's just the truth. I ran away because <laughs> I, I was mentally prepared for that. Then we also have resentment towards that project. A lot of persons get furious when they're not able to figure out things. And at the end, they transfer the aggression to the community members that did or didn't contribute to all of that. Or the maintainers that are just you know managing the project on behalf of the project owners and all. So you hold so much resentment as a contributor simply because you're not welcome in the best ways that you feel you should. And most persons experience burnout because the process of learning this all on your own is tedious. And so a lot of persons end up um, being burnt out because they don't have like a detailed roadmap on how to navigate around this community. Also, you experience nonchalant attitude towards the contributors and the members of the com community generally. And of course, there's no dedication to contribute because you're just here because it's open source. They say it's open source and you've not really seen, you don't know what the community is all about. You don't know project this community offers, but then you're just here. Let, let whatever happens, happens. That's why lots of contributors who are not properly onboarded and look as most open source communities. Now we can see how this affects us in several ways, but then what are the common onboarding mistakes that have made an open source community? Well, there's several, a lot. And most times open source communities give, um, when they receive new contributors, they focus more on this um, distributing the tags, giving them Project, um, areas of project to fix and all of that without putting in like enough effort into making sure these persons are comfortable with the knowledge they have gained about this community. And some of these problems, some of the common mistakes that I have experienced and of course observed from most open source communities is the assumption. And there's always this assumption that um, they'll figure it out. They must have read it from our documentation. But um, what if I tell you today that they, they most likely didn't read your documentation? In fact, they didn't figure it out. Uh, as a new contributor, I'm too scared to do anything that I don't go about snooping into your documentation. And I'm too scared to do that. So I'll just wait for someone to, you know, uh, give me the heads up. If you want to do this, you need to find this. As a new contributor, I'm the lazy contributor. I'm the lazy kind of contributor that feels if the if someone from the community does not give me a heads up, then I might not be able to figure my way out. I'm that kind of contributor. So what happens with your assumptions that everyone is going to read their documentation? What if I um if, what if I, I end up reading your documentation, but still I don't get the knowledge that I'm looking for because either because your documentation is not even you know, to the standard of being a tool for onboarding me, because I know a lot of um, documentations are um, structured that way, too technical for newcomers or persons who are new to the system to understand, and that is another mistake. And then we also have the generalizing. By generalizing, I mean generalizing that, of course, it's open source. So we mean, we know that there are going to be contributors from East, West, North, and South. And this it, these contributors from different parts of the world or regions of the world come with different perspectives and different beliefs and orientation. You might be you might be trying to onboard someone from a country and use certain terms that um, to, uh, give them the impression that they're you're being offensive to them without even knowing it, without even realizing it. And at the end of the day, you're going to say you did a proper onboarding experience, you give them the resources, you did this. But the contributors themselves felt attacked from the day one, and at the end of the day, they bail on the project. 
So that's not what we're looking out for. And then we look, we're looking at negligence, of course. Most communities, once the con contributors get into the communities, they start distributing issues. Like I said, you're going to be seeing there's an available issue here. Um, you can join our meeting, you can do this. But the newcomers are like um, high school students or someone who, who's just getting into high school for the first time without any um, knowledge of how um, high school works or how um, the um, lecturers and all of that are able to, how to assess them. The onboarding process is like getting into a university or a high school for the first time as a student. Now that is not, if you've experienced this, you know that it's not the most um, awesome or blissful memories because walking into that school, the first thing you realize is you're not the only person here and there are thousands of persons doing the same thing, learning. And that's exactly what happens in open source communities. Now you get overwhelmed from the first step. And if you're not properly, or if you don't get a, a guide that walks you through the school, the, um, the rules and the don'ts and those of do's and don'ts of that particular school, you most likely make a, a mistake a few weeks or a few months into your journey that particular school. So that's exactly how it works in open source. Once these contributors come in, if they're not like giving a tour around your community or around your project, they're going to feel neglected. And that and that that's neglect, uh, the negligence that you've showed these contributors, it doesn't just fade away over time. They're going to have it in their mind that this community doesn't really care about me. So if I'm doing anything, I have to do it for me. And that's exactly how the contributor would say it. Then there are too many unnecessary details towards onboarding. Now you're trying to educate me on your community, but you give me documentations that like 10 documentations with you know lots of content under it. And you, for once, do community or the persons in charge of this onboarding stop to think that what if I don't know how to read or what if I have zero idea about web development or the tech ecosystem generally, but I got I joined this ecosystem or this open source community to you know um, increase my skills and all. At the end of the day, you're feeding me with too much information. I'm going to get overwhelmed. I'm going to you know get scared of this information and of course bail on the project too. Then we also have the incomprehensible documentation. Most of our documentations are so technical that if you're too, if you're not um, so experienced, you will have to read dictionaries while going through the documentation. And for a newbie, that is a huge turn up because I don't want to have to be Googling while knowing about your project. I'd rather just watch a YouTube video to save me all of that, don't you think? And then the unclear learning curves. While you're onboarding this person, set out a, a detailed learning curve. But a lot of communities these days do not have this. And it affects the contributors because now you're being filled with so many information all at the same time. You don't know where to start from. Should I should I go to the documentation first or should I check out the the um, blogs first or the I don't know where to start. So like the learning curve has to be properly structured, but a lot of communities today do not have a, a clear learning curve for onboarding in their in their communities. Now what are the consequences of poor onboarding? There's several consequences, of course, because when contributors and users are not properly onboarded, the community at large gets affected on the long run. And how do you mean? I, if I join a community or paraventure I join a community today, the high tendencies that I'll be in that community for the next two to three years. And so whatever you give me, whatever information you give me today is the same information I'm going to give to the next contributors that will be getting into that community for the next three to five years. So if you give me the wrong information, I'm going to be distributing wrong information for the next three to five years. So the consequences of um, onboarding, we have quite a lot of those. First um, is no trust from country communities. So like if when a community does not properly um, get the contributors on track, Contributors do not feel the need to, you know, 
feel comfortable, do not see the community as a, a safe place for them to, you know, expand their skills, to bring in innovative ideas and all of that. They're always putting their eyes or their attention out there for a community that might do better. At every single instance, contributors should be looking out for a community that does better than this one I'm in, because my community does not appreciate me. So I'm really skeptical about this particular community. That's basically how it works. And then we have the lower employee morale. Of course, when you're not, when these contributors do not receive the do's and don'ts code of conduct of that particular community, they're going to leave or experience this, um, exert their contributions in the best ways that they can. So you might see someone doing something offensive and in their defense, they're going to tell you, well, I wasn't told this when I joined the community. And that is rather a painful thing to do because most um, mistakes that I made at this point, I had to actually correct or affect a lot of persons in the, at the end of the day. And then it slows, it slows the uh, engagement level because most of the contributors are focusing more time learning in the period where they're meant to be practicing, you know, the, where they're meant to be contributing and making useful um, effort to the project, they spend all of that time learning. The learning curve that was um, avoided by the community, and they have to, they're um, compelled to do it on their own. So the engagement and contribution rates for the contributors is slowed down eventually. Then we have the reduced confidence among contributors. I know um, sometime I, I joined, I got into a community and I was able to understand what the community does, but I wasn't able to tell a lot of people about this community. It's not that they didn't make enough effort, it's because they didn't do it in the best ways that I'm used to learning. And so at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you I'm contributing to this community, but if someone asks me, what does this community do? I really can't say much because I don't know so much. The best of my reading only told me that a line about this community or something like that. Then we have the results. It also results in poor performance. And when these persons spend so much time learning and doing, at the end of the day, you're going to see contributors that are making, um, they're making useful contributions here, yeah, but not to the standards of that particular project. Let's take, for instance, your documentation. You hand your on your documentation to someone who was not properly onboarded, a newcomer um, for a start, who was not properly onboarded, and who is also new to your, the project your community is offering. If they're to improve that documentation, there's, there's no doubt that, that at the end of the day, your documentation will have so many lapses, so many errors, and or repetitions and all of that because Yes, they were not properly onboarded. They didn't understand the standards that are expected for your community on how the documentation for your community should be. All of that was not put in place. And so you're going to end up with a poor performance from these contributors at the end of the day. And then of course, reduced productivity. The rate at which your community is meant to you know, actively collaborate and work together growing your community will be reduced because so many persons are still trying to navigate around the community on their own. So they will most likely take more time of that than actually doing what is expected, which is improving the project and moving on to the next phase of the project or the community. And of course, the inability to retain these contributors. And like I said, if you're not given the best treatment, a lot of contributors, I, and that's why you see so many open source projects, they have like, um, 5,000 Slack members, but only 10 active Slack members. And you'll be wondering, we did our best. Well, did you really do your best? Because if you're not able to retain these contributors, which means your best was really not, cannot be classified or quantified as your best. Now, being able to, now, inability to actually properly welcome these people and give them the resources expected to do the job is going to make them want to run away from your community one um, sometime into their contributions, either a month or two, it depends on how much they want or how long they want to stay. By the end of the day, the community is going to keep losing contributors 
rather than retaining these contributors. And in the end, this all comes together to yield an unhealthy com community because you're going to see a lot of issues with the, the inclusivity of this community because most um, most of the persons that will stay back if or if per venture the the contributors choose to stay they will be they might not be the contributors that you're looking out for or they might not bring the diversity that you're looking for within your community and all of this and all of this come together to attribute to an unhealthy open source community and that is not what we are looking out for in open source now how can this be um mended or improved on let's say how can we as open source community members work together to fix this and there are different ways but to tackle this i'd always suggest you evaluate the existing rules for your community and go back and adjust your documentation your guidelines on how to get people started evaluate your rules see where the problem is look look at where you went wrong from the start and by the time you identify this or identify the problem you can now know what exactly you did wrong where you went wrong that these community members are not able to you know be productive or they're not able to Re, you're not able to retain these contributors in your community and then you have to adjust your foundation now um, by adjusting your foundation there are several things that were existing before you um got to realize that your onboarding process was not the best i just go back and work on the members the people at the top from the head of the community down to adjust the foundation and of course put out different interactive ways to, for people to come together. If it has to do with setting up hackathons, meetups, just to get your community engaged. And then properly put out the onboarding culture. And by the time you're adjusting your foundation for the project or for the community, embed onboarding as a culture, as a common practice among your members, among your contributors. That way, whenever someone joins a community, now you don't have to and remind your maintainers or your community managers that yes we are meant to give this person a proper walkthrough on our culture but they just on our co community but they just sub, um, subconsciously do this and so when you in, um, uh, inculcate or introduce the idea of onboarding as a culture to your community um over time it's become an unconscious practice and I'm going to give a, a simple example to this. Um, I used to contribute to the layer five community. I've been contributing for the past two years. And we started the um, to restructure the onboarding steps and make sure that whenever someone gets into a community, either the maintainers, the community managers, or the moderators in the community reach out to this person, send out the useful resources and answer their questions or doubts about the community before they even do or make any contributions. And this was something we we decided to be doing. And over time, everyone in the community realized that, oh, if whenever someone joins our Slack or whenever someone joins our meetings for the first time, it is our duty and responsibility to put them through. Now, even if the maintainers are not available at the time, the moderators would definitely want to welcome this person and give them necessary resources. Now, it became an unconscious practice for the community till today and it has helped retain a lot of contributors over the long run but that's another topic for another day and then simplify getting started so what is your your process for getting started like a lot of people make it so complicated like i am just getting into your project i don't think i want to learn how your your uh, the terminologies the very complex terminologies how they work or how the architecture on the ground was put together. I don't think I want to understand. I want to know what is the community? Why does this community exist? What problem are we fixing? And how do I come in? Now, making me understand this, making me aware of this, making me more conscious of areas that I'm meant to be know take responsibilities and work on. It's making me realize that, oh, this is my responsibility for this project. Simplify the getting started 
process. If it means improving the documentation on how to get onboarded, improve it so that everyone that comes in that community is aware of this. You can always refer them to that particular documentation. And if it means educating the persons responsible for onboarding other persons in the community, then that should be, take, um, be a line of action that should be taken as soon as possible. And also, I um adopt diverse methods of onboarding. Onboarding doesn't really have to do with you know, um, putting up a whole documentation that has all of that details. Um, I got into one open source community some time back, and I asked for the resources, the beginner friendly resources, to understand the project, and I was referred to the documentation. Now. Under normal circumstances, the documentation was meant to solve my problem, right? But I feel like documentation created more problems for me because at the end of the day, I didn't understand the project. I didn't know what the community was all about. I didn't know where to come in. I just had a documentation that has so much information. And so try other diverse means of onboarding people. Other than sharing out the documentation, try having one-on-one -on -one calls with your um, contributors. Now, this doesn't have to be an everyday thing. But at least once in a while, try to have a call with the newcomers in your community or a one on one call or create a, a recorded video that actually explains your community, its purpose and um, the goal you're working towards and the areas that the, the new contributor would need to excel in that particular community. A video goes a long way. And of course, a one on one call also goes a long way. And there are other different ways you can. Uh, improve on the onboarding that doesn't have to do with distributing so many documentations and a lot of content. Most contributors end up not reading this documentation and at the end of the day have more difficulties contributing to your community and have a responsive onboarding team. When I say have a responsive onboarding team, I mean delegate people whose um, goal or whose interests are to you know, make others feel comfortable in the community. There's several persons within your community that actually would appreciate this kind of responsibility. So delegate persons that are willing to you know, handle the uh, onboarding process within your community and make sure that everyone that comes in receives the best um, intro or the best welcome that any person should receive. And then let this be a, a common practice that goes on for a long time. So, always be an irresponsive team for onboarding so people can easily refer to these people or reach out to the persons of contact and of course look out for the contributors welfare a lot of communities don't do this i might just be a contributor bringing in code but the little attention i get from a community does a whole different towards how i view that particular community now, um, another experience with an open source community is I got into this community and the founder of the community was the person who sent me a message, a direct message. Well, that was exciting for me because I didn't think I would get a message from the founder. And then, well, through the discussion, um, the founder asked my, you know, my goals, my experiences, how do I think the community can help me? and all of that. And I answered accordingly. And I was referred to the best ways to actually use my skills. And that was, a, that was a very beautiful experience for me. So caring about the little efforts, about caring about these other persons that are coming to your community. I also know a, a founder that is aware of every contributor that works into um, the community. I don't know how this is possible, but every contributor, he can, um, this, um, this founder can identify the contributors by name and by experience. And that's to show you that he cares not only about the code they are bringing or the efforts they are making towards the community, but he cares that you're going to learn while also making useful contributions as well. And so be thinking, be kind with the review and feedback that you're giving out to your contributors. So while you're trying to get people onboarded and you've put together, let's say you've put together an onboarding, um, an onboarding process for your community and it's working perfectly. Now, after these contributors make contributions, either to your documentation or to your code and all of that, how, how um, kind and, you know, 
detailed are the review you give back. Some reviews are heartbreaking. And for someone who is has very little or no confidence in what they're doing at the time, giving a harsh review would only sound, serve as a blocker. And so be kind with your reviews that you're giving out. And another thing is take note of the documentation. If you're going to use your documentation as an onboarding tool, then your documentation should be as, um, as inclusive and informative, but then useful. Not so much information, but then not too little information. And try not to overwhelm your contributors with so much details, because a lot of persons get frightened by this. Try not to overwhelm people with so much details. Give very um, just the minimum details that they need to understand what is meant, what the problem is, what is meant to be done, and how they come in. That is enough to get someone motivated to you know bring in their skills and expertise. And uh, of course, let's look at some of the rewards from quality onboarding for both the community and um, the contributors and open source at large. But it comes to several benefits. Now, this is one thing I've experienced from communities that I've contributed to and helped a lot of persons on board. Well, you're going to, first of all, see that the community will have contributor retention. I've tried this on layer five, a community I, I've been contributing to for quite some time. And we've had the onboarding um, call for the past one year. And the contributors, most of the contributors come back to become maintainers. Most of the contributors come back to become interns in the community. Most of them come back, go out there and you know advocate for the community and say, I joined this community and I got the best experience as a contributor. I was properly onboarded. I received the best welcome. Everyone was nice and friendly to me. Those are the kind of remarks we receive from contributors within layer five. Now this is because we put so much effort to making sure that if you're in our community, you're getting the best, not only from the leaders in this community, but then from every single contributor. If you're reaching out to a contributor, they're putting you and your needs first while working or making their own contributions as well. And of course, we have this decreased stress. As a maintainer or a leader in that particular project, you don't have to you know, break your head, have a lot of problems trying to control your contributors and get them to act in order because all of that was taken care of during the onboarding process. So you don't have to you know, reach out to people and block and block or restrict or ban people from your community anymore because you know that is strictly written in the code of conduct which a lot of attention has been drawn to by the uh, um, but through, during the onboarding process. And so most of the struggles you explain from people asking the most basic questions about your community, the onboarding already took care of that. So now you have to you know, proceed to the next step, which is giving them tax or bringing up ideas and all of that. But then you skip past the stress level where you have to hand feed your contributors. And of course, you gain the contributor's trust. For every country, community that I have contributed to, that I receive the best welcome or a warm welcome, I made sure that I advocated for these communities in the best ways that I can. And I know I joined the Genome Foundation as a contributor. That was in my early eight days of open source contributions. but. I tried to do a lot of advocacy for the community because I received like the best experience during my stay in or during my contribution. And same for Chaos and the same goes for layer five and um, Apache API six. And this community is putting so much effort to making sure that as a contributor, you're not just pushed aside or you know ignored while making your contribution, contribution but you're welcome and that made me comfortable. That made me realize this is a safe place. I can expand and explore. I can bring in innovative ideas on how to improve the project, how to improve myself, and how the community at large can grow. Increase productivity. Of course, when you gain the trust of people and they're willing to actually do this voluntarily, just like it expected, not calling every single person or compelling them to fix tasks, 
you're going to have an increased productivity and of course dedication from both the community and the community members and the maintainers and leaders in that particular community because everyone is um on the same energy let me yeah let me use it that way the energy in that community is on the same level where everyone is working together and then we also have higher engagement and satisfaction higher engagements from the community members you see people coming to ask questions you see people ask answering those questions accordingly even without the maintainers being there now that is because they receive the proper information and like i said Onboarding is like onboarding is like walking into university for the first time. Getting into open source is the same experience. Whatever information you give me on the first day is the same information I'm going to like pass down to the um, other contributors getting into the community. And so when you give me information that it's not not correct or not the best, I'm going to pass that down to other contributors and see how that affects the entire chain within that community. And so, but when a community focuses on onboarding you see higher engagement because people are properly informed people receive the knowledge that is expected of them and they're going to you know share this knowledge out and for users you're going to see users that are satisfied with the product that they receive they're satisfied with the experience of using your product and they most likely refer your product to another person so like that's exactly how the chain works and then we have diversity in members because you were open and not generalizing during your onboarding phase a lot of persons felt this was a safe place to stay behind and you're going to see diverse members coming with their you know diverse ideas and perspectives and all of this come together to build your project and give you a sustainable community a community that is really that is going to keep having contributors that are going to build in more contributors that are going to be educating and informing more persons coming in and that's exactly how the chain goes now from my experiences um trying to you know help or contribute to open source communities particularly onboarding i've seen the growth of most projects rise from the bare minimum to you know the best or like the experience ranks the top because we focus so much attention on onboarding making sure that the newcomers are receive the best treatment and so you see most communities today they have so many stars like you see in this picture you see some people have like a, a lot of stars for their project and if you check their um, slack channel or their meeting platforms you're going to see lots of um members like 2000 3000 5000 6000 and they're about but the engagement for that community is not really encouraging you see the last message that was sent was one week two weeks ago how can an active community have like one message in an entire two weeks does that mean the newcomers are not asking questions does that mean the users are not curious about the product or does that mean that people have asked questions and were and didn't receive answers so they stopped asking well, these are the questions you actually have to ask yourself as a community leader or as a community owner. And of course, you look at the right, you're going to see the difference that ex that we experience in these communities. You see that there are going to be more issues coming from the community members, more interactions in the Slack channels, of course, awareness for the project and all of that. Well, that comes that brings us to the end of today's section and i'd like to give a wrap and say thank you for you know listening during the section i hope you picked a thing or two about um how to improve your onboarding experience for open source community and i'd like to give a, a word just a word or a phrase rather um like i said onboarding is like getting into open source community is like getting into the university for the first time whatever experience i get on my first day is going to last throughout my stay in that community whatever experience i get through my first period of being in that community will last for a long time and so communities focus so much attention on making sure the um, first experience or the first impression their contributors receive say a lot about the project in the best ways possible and as well as the culture of that particular community and so 
Thank you for your time. And yeah, that's all. <laughs>